there I was, stuck in a daydream. I just want to work on my modeling. Hey guys, welcome back to Phillips Hot Rod Garage. We just saving an old rusty Model A from going to the scrapper. If you're into that sort of thing, go on ahead and hit subscribe and hang out with me for a while. All right, so we finished this cow side in the last video. So what I'm doing now is I'm just putting on the final touches so I can leave this for a while and not have to worry about this area uh, rusting over or anything. So. I'm just sanding it down with some 80 grit sandpaper. And what I'm gonna do is apply some metal prep to this area. Now what I've got is a couple of products here. A couple of products I picked up from my local hardware store. One is this product called Osfo. And the other is a concrete and metal prep by Clean Strip. This Osfo is by Skyco. Now both of these products, the main ingredient is phosphoric acid. The Osfo is a lot more expensive than the concrete metal prep, but honestly, they pretty much do the same job when you put them on the car. Now, this area is rust-free. I did not sandblast any of this. I used this concrete and metal prep to strip every bit of this rust off this area. So what I did was I started by sanding it down, then I used a wire brush on it, then I used this product with a wire brush, just kept the area wet until all the rust was gone. It'll strip the rust all the way to bare metal. It's kind of time consuming, but it works. The best part about this product is it leaves the phosphorus coating on the surface so that it won't rust. Clean Strip says that you have to dilute it to use it as a metal prep. And the Osfo says just put it straight on just like it is. I've used both, they both work the same. It doesn't really matter to me which one I use. I get the same end result. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm just gonna go ahead and finish sanding this down and I'm gonna apply this Osfo. Then I'm gonna turn the car around. We're gonna get to work on the other side. All right guys, so this stuff is really simple to use. Just pour a little bit into a bowl and I use a red scotch Brite pad. And of course I put on some gloves. But what I do is I take that red scotch Brite pad and use it to kind of scrub that metal prep into the panel. And then I just take some paper towels and just wipe it down when it's done. It seems to work good for me like that. So I'll show you how I do it. Now a little bit of a warning if you have a really nice concrete floor, don't spill this stuff on there if you can help it. Because this stuff does etch the concrete. Doesn't really hurt it, but you you have to kind of wash it off pretty quick and get it off the concrete because it will leave the concrete uh, a white color wherever it touches it. It doesn't take much of it to do the job. All right guys, so I'm gonna go back over this panel again and I'm gonna use the metal prep from Clean Strip. I'm gonna try to use that to get off this dark uh, discoloration that the Osfo left. I've used the Osfo on uh, bare metal and never had it to do that. So apparently the Osfo doesn't get along well with the galvanized coating that's on these aftermarket replacement panels. I'm gonna try that and see if that'll make it look any better. Hopefully it will. 
I just don't like how it turned it dark. I don't have, I don't like how that looks. I know the panel's protected, it won't rust, but I just don't like the way it looks. You can see that foaming that normally does not happen when I use this product. So it's gotta be because of that galvanized coating that that's happening. It's definitely lightening it up some. Seems to be working. It's gonna take a few minutes though, but I'm gonna get it. All right, I got the metal prep put on. I got it looking pretty good, it's still drying. I'd say neither one of those products really works very well on galvanized metal. Works really good on bare metal. You can see right here where I sanded through the galvanized down to bare metal. Just look how much better it looks in this area right here. And then you can see in here where all the galvanized is still on it. Just doesn't look as good there, but that doesn't matter. I'll sand all that galvanize off anyway. I don't really want that galvanize on there. I'll sand it down to bare metal and put some epoxy primer over it. All right, let's just get this thing turned around and get started on the other side. All right, it's time to get started on the driver's side cow panel. So this thing was took apart before I bought the car. The person that took it apart just stuck some bolts in it. Some of the rivets have already been removed, but I may have to take some more rivets out to get this thing off. Not really sure. There's a row of bolts on the inside holding the tank to the cow side. You get those out. This thing is squeaking. All right, I think it's gonna come off. Oh yeah. What a rusty mess. So my original plan was to try to repair these sub rail extensions. I got one for the other side that was off the same car that I got the section of sub rail out of to repair the other side. But the more I started sandblasting and cleaning on this thing, the thinner it got. So I've decided since this side is as rough as it is, this side's as rough as it is, I think the best thing to do is just go ahead right now and order a new set. So, I gotta go ahead and get a couple of rivets out right here, down here, to get this piece separated from the firewall. And then we'll fit the cowl side in the same way we did on the other side. One guy told me today I need to stop talking and just get to work. So that's what I'm gonna do. We've got some rivets to deal with. We've got two rivets here we gotta remove. We got two rivets here, one here and one here that we've gotta remove. Now from the factory, the sub rail extension was attached to the cow side under the bottom here but since the cow side's rusted completely away from it we won't have to worry about that and of course it's already loose from the cow post here because the only thing that holds it in there is a bolt through that hole right there all right there's more than one way to do this you can drill these out i'm just going to grind the head of them off That one looks good. Yeah. 
Guys, as I'm grinding these rivets down, I'm trying not to grind very much away from the firewall. Try to preserve as much of that metal on that firewall as possible. I've got to grind the rivet down, but I just don't want to grind too heavy on the firewall because I may have to use the firewall. I really don't know if I will or not. I don't know if I'm going to have to uh, recess this firewall. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to have to uh, keep it uh, stock. I'd rather have the stock firewall, but I may have to have a recess firewall. I don't know yet. It uh, depends on how the uh, engine looks when I get it in. The, the Hemi's kind of a wide engine, but from studying some photos of these cars with Hemi's in them, especially with the 32 frame, which adds a little bit of length under the hood area, uh, from looking at photos, it looks like some of the guys are running the stock firewall with the Hemi. The engines look to be pretty short. So I don't know yet. We'll see what happens when we get there. So we got two more to go here at the bottom. Then we can try to pry this subrail extension out of the way. One old rusty driver side sub rail extension now out of the way. All right, guys, now that this is out of the way, let's go ahead and take a look at the cow post and the sub rail and see what's got to be done. All right, the first thing I see in here is that we've got to repair this area the same way we did on the other side. We had to put a patch in the same place over there. Also, if we look from the inside, we see this bracket is in really bad shape. All right, looking at this from the front, the cow post is in a whole lot better shape than the other side was in. Subrail is as well, but you can see that bracket that holds the cow post to the subrail. Yeah, it's terrible. And on the outside, we only got a couple of holes to deal with under here. Whole lot better than the other side. Definitely better than the other side. So this bracket's gonna be kind of hard to repair. It has a lot of shape in it. So it's gonna be hard to fix. I could build a new one from scratch, but I rebuilt the passenger side and it looks original. So I hate to come over here to the driver's side and just, just scrap something together and, and it not look original. So I think I've got another plan on this. This thing is not reproduced. You can't buy it, but I got a plan. Let me see what I can come up with. All right, guys, I got some parts. So a piece of a Model A right here. I got in some Model A parts I bought a while back. Just so happens. It has a perfectly good bracket on the driver's side. Passenger side is rusted away. But the driver's side, it's in good shape. So I'm just going to take the bracket off this piece, put it on my car. But I'm going to do it without messing up this post. This is a pretty solid cow post. And I believe on all this Model A stuff, as old as it is now, 
the best thing to do is try to preserve and save as much of it as you can. Don't just go around destroying this stuff just to be doing it. So many people are just cutting this stuff up. This stuff's almost 100 years old. So save it. Somebody might need it. So I'm going to take this bracket out without damaging the cow post. Put this bracket into my car. All right, let's get this thing up here where we can work on it. All right, we got to figure out where the rivets are so we can get this bracket off of the post without destroying either one of these pieces. But before we do that, I'm kind of anxious to see how the cow side is going to fit. I just want to see if it's going to be as bad as the other side was. All that shrinking, stretching, and all that fitting I had to do. I'm just anxious to see if it's going to be that bad. So let's go ahead and stick that thing up there and see how it looks real quick. So I clamped it in place down the back edge. Got it pretty close at the bottom down here. Then I clamped it at the bottom front to the firewall. Ooh, ooh. That fits worse than the other side, actually. So that's going to require a lot of work. Guys, you're not going to buy cow sides for a 28-29 Model A, at least not from this company, and just bolt them on and expect them to fit. Unless, of course, you're dreaming. So I got this Lincoln painted. This thing turned out good. But hey, I got to quit daydreaming and get back to work. So I'll see you guys in the next one.